to satisfy whomever that they are going to work on the case. But you don't believe they are? No. It was a case full of shocking turns, one which put the city of Gilmer under the national spotlight. I had no idea that it was going to mushroom into the scenario that it did. Well, ultimately leaving behind the life of a young missing girl. It's just a haunting loss because you never know. On January 5th, 1992, Kelly Day Wilson vanished. The 17-year-old Gilmer High School student was last seen leaving the video store where she worked in downtown Gilmer. She left, deposited her check at a nearby bank, but never made it home. She returned to the video store, parked at the side of it uh, because of this flat tire. And after that, who knows what happened? She simply vanished into the night. Her stepfather found her card and called the police the next morning. Investigators discovered one of her tires had been intentionally slashed. All of her belongings found inside the car. Her keys, however, missing. There was no sign of a struggle and no trace of Kelly. I thought, well, she just stayed out all night, that kind of thing. But she didn't. And I, I really kind of got concerned. She was scheduled to work that day when we opened at noon. And when she didn't show up for work, I, I began to be concerned about that. The man who was the last to see Kelly that night did not want to show his face or give his name. He was in his 30s at the time and worked as the manager at the video store. As we walked out, I believe that the words were, do you open to Mark? And she says, yes. And I said, OK, I'll see you. He was among the first group of people investigators questioned. After being cleared as a suspect, he says he began trying to retrace his time with Kelly. They came to me with all kinds of things. Photos of people from Louisiana, from high school annuals, other criminals. You know, have you ever seen these guys? And uh, I didn't. I got a phone call two days after Kelly disappeared from Gilmer Police Sergeant James Brown. And I distinctly remember he said, I need some help. Philip Williams was a reporter working for the Longview News Journal at the time. He says after spending days going door to door and searching all possible leads, Sergeant Brown classified the case as a missing persons. The community was just stunned. Uh, the girl disappeared from downtown Gilmer for crying out loud. Sergeant Brown requested help from the FBI. The search would lead them to the arrest of Michael Bybee, the man accused of slashing her tire. I'm sure it was done before. He said later on that he saw us leave, you know. That, that I left and that she left. A guy who cut her tire, who was said to have had nothing to do with it, with her disappearance, incredibly enough. The case then led investigators to Chris Denton, Kelly's boyfriend at the time. He was considered to be a prime suspect and even failed a polygraph test, but no charges ever brought. It apparently was a case of they just couldn't get the goods on him for some reason. I mean, you have no body. His cousin Brent Ward also questioned and charged with perjury, but again, no charges of murder. A year into the investigation, desperate for a lead, Sergeant Brown brought in a psychic, but soon all roads faded. And then all hell broke loose in January 94 when we got these indictments. The results of our investigation is as follows. In 1994, nearly 10 people, including Police Sergeant Brown, were arrested for Kelly's disappearance. Along with them, Reserve Police Officer Roger Holdman and members of the Kerr family. It was believed they were part of a satanic cult and had kidnapped, raped, and murdered Kelly. Claims made they had kept her alive for at least nine days, keeping her in a shed and even a toolbox before killing her. Apparently, a lot of their evidence rested on the uh, fantasy that a woman who was described to me as having the IQ of a fern <laughs> dreamed up. If, if this so-called stuff that they were claiming or, or charging them with, if, if that was true, then anything else before that would have been just, they could have been all lies. And I remember thinking, well, where is the body? A special prosecutor from Galveston with Child Protective Services was brought in. The national media descended on us. This is Dateline Sunday. The satanic Colton claims of child molestation taking center stage. Kelly's disappearance fading from the headlines. What was going through your mind in terms of the focus is starting to shift? Yes, it was, that was, it destroyed it. It destroyed any, any relevant evidence that Sergeant Brown had any of the investigators they had put together, it just blew it out of the water. After months of being on trial, the charges against all of those accused were dropped due to lack of evidence. Something to be real happy about. But the damage stayed for Sergeant Brown. This was devastating to him. I mean, imagine that 
you know, you've been trying to solve a girl's murder for two years and all of a sudden you're accused of it and you're looking at possibly the death penalty. I'd believe Billy Graham was running the mafia before I'd believe Brown had anything to do with this. He even suffered a stroke. Along with him, reserved officer Holman, who says it took nearly 20 years to gain his reputation back. Even now, still suffering from it all. In my opinion, uh, these eight people were really done wrong. No one would ever be charged with Kelly's disappearance. Chris Denton, the prime suspect, died of cancer in 2004. No other leads coming into light. The case of a missing girl pushed out by a story bound in false accusations, leaving the city wondering, will they ever know? It is horrible for anybody to not have an answer. Daniel Pierce, KETK News.